in terms of uh, uh, talking about how to increase productivity and quality uh, and the uh, current cotton scenario we have uh, mr manish daga uh, the cotton guru of india uh, mr manish daga managing director of cotton guru group is qualified as technical technology te uh, as textile technologist and marketing expert having an experience over 30 years in the textile industry he is a certified cotton grader and india's one and only registered value over valuer he is an expert farmer trainer and commercial technical advisor for ginning factories spinning mills corporate textile industries and commodity investors he has first hand experience from farm to factory based on his close and direct association with all the links of the textile value chain he is popularly known as cotton guru in the textile industry his articles are regularly published in national newspapers and national and international magazines he is currently the director of cotton association of india cai the apex body for cotton trade in india he is a established columnist for exclusive cotton news as cotton guru in national newspapers and magazines and various international textile magazines he is the editor of cotton guru fortnightly newsletter which is circulated to over 10000 textile companies professionals associations worldwide and also referred by government officials and agriculture and textile ministry he has devised a unique cotton guru system of cotton sourcing to mitigate the risk and increase profit in cotton sourcing trading many of the farmers trained by cotton guru have achieved highest yields in their respective areas uh, kindly go ahead uh, mr daga and uh, we are looking forward to all the insights from you may i request you to please limit your presentation and talk to say about 15 minutes or so because we already <laughs> lost out too much time on the lo longer understand. time i have been waiting since one hour <laughs> yes <laughs> uh thank you rajiv ji thank you dai uh, for giving me this opportunity i am currently in maputo mozambique of um, east africa uh, to address uh, the southern eastern uh, african cotton forum meeting here it was there uh, on the 30th of june and the 1st of july yesterday and day before and uh, 15 countries from Africa had gathered here uh, when I was invited to speak here. And the invitation came from ICAC, International Cotton Advisory Committee, which is the apex statistics body for cotton in the world, located in uh, Washington, USA. So I'm currently there right now. I'll be leaving from here today afternoon. So I'm in Maputo right now. So why am I here? I'm here to speak on economics of cotton why these 15 countries have uh, delegates associations have gathered here to listen to a speaker from india and why a um, association from us has invited a speaker from india they really want to know what india is doing in cotton that has resulted in the phenomenal growth of the indian textile industry why is india a leader in organic cotton what differently India is doing that other countries are not able to do and they would definitely love to do to grow in cotton textiles. Now, why? I will just share a short story with you. I'll, I, there is no presentation I have. I will limit my talk to 10, 12 minutes and then, then there can be questions. I just want to highlight and I would totally, while um, Mr. Vij is a good friend and um, Personally, we uh, get along very well, and his statistics were um, fantabulous. And even Dr. Sujata Saxena's statistics were true. What we fail to realize is where are we going? Are we going on the right path? So, this story may uh, highlight the, the pain that I want to share. There, is, um, there was a village in which the villagers were very happy, they were well to do, they were earning well for themselves and um, self-dependent they they never ventured outside their village everything they wanted was um, made available within the village and um, they were doing very well for themselves the neighboring villages were very envious of this village why is this village never coming out to ask anything from us always we have to go and ask something from them and they give but they they still don't ask anything in return what is that they are doing then after deep research, they found that their main asset was cattle. 
they were doing agriculture but they were using their cattle for multi purpose they were using their cattle for agriculture for milk for milk products and uh, even for natural manure so they never even went out to buy any manure now these villagers outside that prosperous village were now wanting to take away the asset that these these villagers had uh, the the rich village had and they they formed a bunch of um, they found a bunch of thieves who were ready to you know do the work for them now these thieves made a round of this village as visitors they um, moved around the village how do we take away the asset of this village that is the cattle every cattle uh, had a bell around it and uh, whenever the cattle moved around the bell was ringing and the villagers would know that that my cattle is at which place or if it is not at the right place now that was a full proof method that the villagers had found out because even previously attempts had been made to steal the cattle and uh, now these thieves because they were professional thieves they they knew that uh, no, in normal way they were they will not be able to steal this cat they again met they devised a plan and then at the um, midnight they went inside the village they removed the bell from the cattle's neck and they took the cattle out of the village now they formed two teams one team took the cattle out of the village on one road the second team took the bells with them and let the bells ring and they took the other road so the villagers woke up at the ring of the bells they realized oh something is happening to a cattle they are moving at night they normally don't move and then they ran at uh, behind the sound of the bells they ran 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 inside the jungle outside the village and at a certain point they found that all the bells were dumped at one place and there was no cattle the cattle was lost the asset was lost that village became like any other village which was a poor village now what do we infer from here who are these thieves these thieves are people who do not want india to grow who are which is that village that village is india our country what is that asset what is the cattle we have that cattle is cotton why cotton is so important now if you see the figures cotton is not just a commercial commodity for india it is a cash crop for india it is a social crop for india it is a political crop for india cotton is the only fiber in the world which is used for all the purposes that a fiber can be used food fuel and clothing every part of cotton is utilized and every part has an industry catering to it cotton seed cotton hulk cotton linter these are the by products cotton oil then cotton fiber and then even cotton stocks sircot has a whole plant which shows how hard board can be made out of cotton stock so why is cotton so vital to india's economy because it is not just a commodity it is an asset india's farm exports are growing consistently if you see the year uh, 2020 the farm exports were 35 billion usd 2021 40 billion usd and 2022 50 billion usd i am talking about farm exports the major products rice meat and marine sugar and cotton over 6.5 million farmers are in, duly involved in cotton agriculture engaging in 120 lakh hectares of land which is 32% of world agricultural land engaged in cotton now which is the commodity or which is the fiber that can make or break a gdp a country's gdp again it is cotton during season 2021 uh, 21 22 indian cotton production fell from 5.95 million tons to 5.35 million tons we have seen the figures indian cotton prices reached their historic highest level in 2022 an increase of over 100% in last one year textile industry was compelled to drastically reduce consumption and divert to man made fibers why the cattle was already stolen we had lost the advantage of cheap cotton abundant cotton available at cheap prices in india can the industry not realize what is their cattle what is their asset we are running after unsustainable futuristic ideas 
importing raw material making a fiber in india with only three producers can that be a sustainable source for 4000 textile mills in india can we compete with the world with what they are making the world is making polyester textiles if we also do that will we be competitive enough dr sujata just said 100 million people are getting employment out of uh, cotton and and the supply chain cotton is directly related to agriculture which is again the highest employment generating sector for india are we forgetting our strength are we just eye washing ourselves with the what world wants us to do the world wants us to convert into synthetic fiber the world wants us to be dependent on them these are the neighboring villages they do not want us to grow as a textile industry they want us to depend on them for growth and for sourcing which currently we are not we are exporting our raw material with their importing even being the highest priced fiber in the world indian cotton has surpassed the export uh, estimates how does that work out the countries which are importing indian cotton are making good money is that logical or are we thinking enough into what we ought to do whenever we earn some money what do we do we save we invest or we insure ourselves but when in 20 um, post march 2020 the prices of cotton fell by 30 percent and in october november 2020 was the second year of msp it has never happened in history of india before that there were two consecutive years of msp purchase do we realize what is an msp purchase by the government we say whenever the prices go down below the msp level government will come and buy and it's a good thing agreed but only when the prices have gone down below the minimum level set by the government they are minimum support prices they are not the cost of agriculture prices two years in a row the prices went down and the government had to intervene and then the industry made 100 rupees per kg in all the count throughout 2021 have you seen that spread before in your life in my 32 years of experience in cotton and textile as a farmer as an entrepreneur even as a processor i haven't seen that 100 years in 100k rupees per kg in all the counts throughout the year 2021 such a long honeymoon can the industry even think of such a fantabulous year that they ever had and where have we invested how have we insured ourselves what is the saving that we have is we have invested in synthetic fibers that is what was shared today we are investing in expansion of capacity we are investing uh, in our money where we will again be dependent on the world for our raw material have any of these industry players invested one rupee in a cotton farm 6.5 million sources of supply we have 6.5 million against the three available do we get um, synthetic fibers as um, quantity as per our choice today our spinning mills in india are struggling our clients are struggling they want x x amount of material the company says only x minus some some amount is available and that too not today we were not in this position only four months back if things have changed we need to realize that what is wrong with the textile industry to the direction that is why this textile advisory group was made by the honorable textile minister first time i have seen textile ministry and agriculture ministry with the secretaries get together i am luckily part of the group and i have been invited as the only farmer representative from india but it is not a proud thing to say that we are overlooking very factual um, things that are in front of us. Because the second question should be, what has led to the slowdown in the cotton agriculture sector? The cotton crop went down by 15 to 20 percent. Is the industry concerned? This is after two years of MSP. 
would you as a businessman not slow down on a certain business which is mm, showing losses very obvious isn't it but we fail to realize so for getting the right answers i'm here in africa to speak on economics of cotton and focusing on organic cotton have we forgotten india is 50% supplier of organic cotton and most of it is exported ELS cotton at one time ELS cotton was the strength of india today we are importing ELS cotton in spite of the fact that ELS cotton indian ELS cotton is the cheapest in the world so these two assets we are losing immediately and the third basic thing i want to say that if cotton is considered as an asset and if the value of cotton is realized we need to understand the economics of cotton to determine the right economic value of cotton which would secure both consumers and producers i am pro industry all the time without the industry no farmer can survive but the industry has to realize where its future lies this issue can be involved resolved by engaging farmers directly into the supply chain through the farmer producer organizations government has promoted 10000 farmer producer organizations now they are more organized more ready to be your suppliers than the individual farmer and the textile industry can very well engage in integrated projects in public private partnership or through contract farming this is the way out involve yourself be a participant not a preacher we need influencers yes but we need participation that is important it's very important to reduce the cost of agriculture to improve our soil condition and increase farmers profitability productivity will definitely come the farmer is well well knowledgeable he knows his job we have been running the industry since 10 20 years the farmer is farming throughout his family life since 7000 years when there was no industry he knows his job we only have to tell him what is currently available and if the best things are available which are not accessible to him help him to access that that is all i ask for from the industry we need to ensure the farmers economic sustainability for being sustainable ourselves benefits to brands we are having access to brands i mean cotton guru is right now working with international brands who are so keen to get into india these brands never replied to our emails 5 years back but now they are asking us to get into joint projects with them in india for organic cotton why are they suddenly interested they have committed themselves 2025 2027 2030 we will be 100% sustainable sourcing company sustainable in in sustainable fibers where will the sustainable fibers come from synthetics are we kidding ourselves and what about biodegradable fibers and fabrics what about them we are forgetting the environment dear friend global warming is here to stay climate change is here to stay that is also impacting the cotton crop in india are we giving that technology to this farmers for ensuring our own future we need to do that we need to get started somewhere and i would just like to end with a shloka in sanskrit sarve bhavantu sukhina sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu मा कस्य दुख भाग भवे ओम शांति 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 ही इफ वी नीड हैप्पीनेस फॉर अवर सेल्फ वी नीड टू गिव हैप्पीनेस टू अदर्स इफ वी नीड पीस फॉर अवर सेल्फ वी नीड टू गिव पीस टू अदर्स एंड इफ वी नीड प्रॉस्पेरिटी फॉर अवर सेल्फ वी नीड टू एंश्योर द प्रॉस्पेरिटी ऑफ द एंटायर सप्लाई चेन इन हियर इंडिया एज एन अपॉर्चुनिटी it is already a leader in well, cotton textile but it has to learn its lesson and on time if it has to replace china china plus one this is the way only if we can get the world average in cotton yields today india is 450 kg per hectare if you can get the 750 kg per hectare world yield the india crop would be 5 crore bales with no increase in that can we do something there to change and make india the textile mall of the world the organic cotton hub of the world this is the opportunity i would like to share with you thank you